Hello, everybody. My name is Julia Payton Jones. I'm Senior Global Director at Gallery Tadeus Ropak and curator of A Focus in Painting, the exhibition we're going to be talking about together with the artists who I'm going to introduce to you now. There's been a recent upsurge of, of exhibitions focusing on artists for whom painting is their preferred medium. And this show presents a work of four painters, both established and emerging, who explore the medium in different ways. With materials ranging from yarn to newsprint to poured color, the processes the artists use are compellingly diverse. Mandy El Sayeg and Rachel Jones explore what appears to be abstraction. However, at its core is an investigation of the human body and the formation of identity. While Alvaro Barrington and Donna Nelson play with form and materials not usually associated with painting. Alvaro Barrington was born in Caracas, Venezuela in 1983. Hi! Uh, he has risen to international acclaim in recent years uh, with his multi-dimensional practice, ranging from solo presentations of his work to collaborative street parties, concerts and floats from the Nottingham Carnival. He is currently teaching at Slade School of Fine Art in London and will have a solo exhibition at Gallery Tadeus Ropak in Paris in the spring of 2021. London-based Mandy El Sayeg. Hi, Mandy, good to see Hi. you. Hi, everyone. Uh, was born in 1985 in Selangor, Malaysia. She had her first institutional show, a specially commissioned installation, Cite Your Sources, at London's Chisholm Hale Gallery last year. She was shortlisted for the biannual Max Mara Art Prize for women in collaboration with Whitechapel Art Gallery, London in 2017. Rachel Jones, hi Rachel, good to hi. see you. Was born in 1991 in London and completed her master's degree at the Royal Academy Schools last year and was awarded the André Donnoye de Segonzac Honorable RA Prize before exhibiting alongside Gillian Ayres and now, and now Matsunga at the New Art Centre Salisbury in 2019. She has held residences both at the Chinati Foundation Martha, Texas in 2019 and Masterworks Museum of Bermuda Art, Bermuda in 2016. Donna, hi Donna, speaking to you in the US, was born in 1947 in Grand Island, Nebraska, USA and has an earth spanning 50 years that has been exhibited internationally. Incorporating a variety of approaches to both image and material, Donna is most recognizable for her two-sided stain paintings in which she works on both sides of the stretch canvas. This, these characteristic paintings constitute a significant element of your ongoing practice, and they are included in the exhibition the Focus on Painting. So hello everybody and thank you so much for joining me. Not knowing quite where to start, I put a pin on the map and um, wanted to begin with a discussion that I took as a starting point, um, which is John Baldessari's historic work of 1966 to 1968, What is Painting? Which led me to the question, what is painting now? Uh, all of you are engaging with the medium in widely, widely different ways. Um, and it would be really interesting to hear from you what your take is on painting now. And I'd like to start with Donna, if I may, uh, and your answer to that question. Oh, what is painting now? <laughs> well, I think it always involves a kind of um, illusion uh, that you get with uh, stretching a two-dimensional surface and then putting words on or um, colors or space or marking, immediately you get a kind of illusion, even if you put one mark on a, on a plain canvas. So that illusion references our interiority, our, our identities, our intellectual investigations, and it's all inseparable from our emotional climates. So in, in painting, the thing that's interesting about painting is, is how it joins everything that we are as human beings on a two-dimensional surface or on any surface and um, for others to contemplate, to talk about, and to think about. So it's very old and very immense and will go on forever. 
Well, indeed. I mean, the death of painting is often discussed, you know, and it, 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 mm. it rears his head from time to time. But now there is a sort of a return to looking at painting in, in a way which is amazingly exciting. My own history is uh, a former student at the Royal College of Art and the Painting School. So for me, it's sort of I'm, I'm steeped in the tradition and endlessly fascinated by it. Um, now, Donna, thank you for being so eloquent. And Alvaro, you've, you've known Donna's work really probably better than any of us because you saw her early shows, her Whitney show, you returned to it many times when it was on her exhibition at galleries in New York. So could you perhaps respond to what Donna has said and also talk a little bit about your perspective of painting which of course is, uses material that many people won't associate with painting. In other words, yarn, um, the burlap sacks that you use as instead of canvas. Um, hi, yeah, I think firstly, as a student at Hunter, which has like a long history um, of abstraction, especially being in New York, um, there was a moment where my consciousness was really forming as an artist. And it was around the same time that um, Donna, Lewis Fishman, uh, Amy Silman, um, um, I, I was becoming aware of them mostly through uh, Carrie Moyer and Katie Siegel, who are professors of mine at, at Hunter. And so they became sort of uh, bridges to um, a sort of big part of my DNA or my understanding of what painting is and what painting could be. And um, so I'm, I'm very grateful in just even being here in the conversation with you, Donna. Oh, um, <laughs> you're such an interesting artist. <laughs> you're very modest. <laughs> no, it's true. I mean, they were, it was so, a sort of mind blowing at that time when you're really, when I'm really, in, when I was sort of really embracing this idea of painting. But um, I think for me, painting at its sort of um, fundamental core is uh, pigment or color on a surface. And that surface could be a wall or that surface could be dyeing a piece of yarn or, um, or it could be in today's age, uh, Photoshopping color pixels on a screen. And I think um, that really is sort of, to me, the core idea of what a painting is. Rachel, do you, do you agree with that, um, those two uh, interpretations of what painting is? Yeah, I think, Donna, you put it really well. Um, and I suppose my interest in painting is about the image and the material. Um, and as of late, that means that painting isn't just about using paint and it talks more about drawing for me as well. And so I think there is no, there's no way to define it really. Um, and it's as explorative as someone wants it to be. And I think that's what's so interesting about all of our practices is that it's different for us in a personal level and what Donna was saying about how it's about our interior landscape and like an emotional understanding of material and self and all of that is integral in the conversation I think around painting so yeah it's quite um a seemingly simple thing to ask but there is really no um answer I feel like it's it's everything to some extent and Mandy um yeah what, what would our answer be I would Agree. Firstly, well, I haven't waved to you. Hi, how are you? I think we did. Um, <laughs> we did. Oh, well, yeah. we've got another one. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think it's like this Mobius strip thing to explain what painting is, because it does include the drawing, which is like, you know, a line on a surface, but then this figure ground relation and color and pigment just slips it back into that spirally, um, goes against definition kind of thing. But for me, I think alongside all that materiality and space and dimension, there's also a querying about the framework in which we are viewing painting, the historical frame, the interpolation process, that's the failures of that, and how 
viewing conditions can change the way you would experience painting and question and put that up for like a, a, a you know a really important query that we need to be dealing with and that's my angry side because um, I love painting but I also hate it and that contradiction that's inside me is it's kind of like the same kind of um, difficulty in expressing what I'm, I'm just I'm on the border of it basically I always call myself a draftsman as a way to to deal with that um, fight inside me um, because there's lots of urgent things and I always felt kind of guilty for painting because it's such a sensuous um, free-flowing privileged thing to act to do and I, I felt bad uh, for a very long time um, but yeah I'm, like, I'm accepting it slowly but, mm -hmm. yeah because drawing in fact I think it was very much part of all your practice you know uh, in Arvo's installation for example the line it goes back to a, a exhibition that he and I both worked on here at this gallery but it's a linear progression but each one of you in your way have drawing at the heart of what you do I'm by nature a drawer and I love this um, this way of describing a painter as a drawer or somebody you know, a, a painter can be so many different things. Um, does that strike, does that strike true to you about drawing? Is that important to you? Do you think about it when you, you make your work or is it so integral to your practice that you, it's like neither here nor there? Who are we talking to, me? I, yeah, why not? Um, I think it's, it should be integral to like most creative practices. If you're an architect or a kid, um, it's like an everyday practice. It's important for everyone. Even if you're a performer, like diagrams, you know, um, it's the first mark, the primary, yeah, index. Um, so yeah, it's definitely integral in every way possible. And also nets, you know, are layering the image. I mean, the, the, ex the work that we have of yours here, principally, but not solely, are your net paintings. Uh, together with um, the reduction rug, which is on the floor, and then the floor, which is an installation in itself. But the nets are very much about the drawn line as a way of masking, in a way, the image. Mm. Mm. I mean, yeah, it goes back to that Mobius strip thing where it's the drawing, it's a very simple drawing, the line. But then as a gestalt, it's a thickness of flesh. So there's this kind of like, not holographic, but like this kind of, um, conflation of registers that from different distances have different effects, which I find at the heart of painting really, um, that's the inquiry, right? That's the place you wanna play with. Um, um, same with every other artist here. Um, there's this kind of going back and forth and distance wise and it changing and morphing, which I find interesting, yeah. Because when I, I look at uh, Rachel's paintings, I'm drawn into the hinterland um, you know, through the mouth into the gut and down. And there are, there is this kind of, there's a sense of a cave, but I also think about those tombstone of teeth. Once you see the, the tiger, which is a slow teething, whatever you've been thinking about the image in terms of representation really becomes clear because it's like, okay, I was either right or I was wrong and now I understand. But that feeling of, of the mouth being a sort of a gateway, if you like, to the interior is a very fascinating thing because all of you are, for me, about numerous layers, which as a viewer, you, we penetrate. You know, you, you, you give us the first introduction and then we go further and then we go further and then we go further. So, I mean, I feel that by looking at your paintings that I'm right in the interior of your gut, mm -hmm. and yet you're only giving me the teeth, which I think is really a very fascinating concept. But I think this is, it, the teeth for you are a signifier. Yeah, yeah. And I think, I suppose I happen to fall into that because it was just the easiest way to talk about lots of things. It was a way to talk about painting and drawing and colour and the self, um, but also just um, just the like simple joyfulness of making things. And like Mandy says, dealing with this idea of feeling lucky and guilty about being able to make a painting um, and just 
trying to you know give myself permission to just make something as honestly and sincerely as possible and how Mandy you said earlier about you know drawing for like a, someone who's an architect or a child it's like yeah it's like everything and I think I wanted the work to fall into a category where it is lots of different things um even though it is quite singular in its um in its like in my desire to create the work it's you know a specific thing but it's also about lots of other things as well and that's what I think painting is it's lots of different things it's not just a fixed monolithic pillar um and especially for the person looking at it it means different things for them or what they understand of painting is different so yeah well I mean I think that's that's what's so exciting about the times we live in is that you know painters can be sculptors sculptors can be filmmakers film filmmakers can be poets and so on there is no and you don't have to do one thing you can do many things yeah. um you know Alvaro for you music forms such an important part of your interest and your fascination and I would say also inspiration amongst many other things including fashion um the list is really endless and so for you um that reference to your history as well as the present I, I find very intriguing and the fact that you chose yarn as your palette as your palette of paint really what made you do that uh i guess that I always feel like when I'm painting, maybe I'm trying to find something within me that lets the people that I know and love feel like um, that I love them. You know, there's all these sort of love languages that people have, whether it's like touch or, um, or gifts or whatever. And, my love language is sort of uh I, i'm i'm always thinking about the people in my life and it it uh, um i hadn't been in grenada since 95 but my heart is sort of still there all the time and i remembered um one of my aunts one of the last things she did for me was send me this uh table mat um, that she had crocheted that was incredibly beautiful. It was red and white. And her ability to, to put colors together was had stayed in my head. But I think as a 15-year-old boy, it was maybe the worst gift you could give a 15-year-old boy <laughs> was a table mat I when I was imagine. sort of into Jordans. and. <laughs> 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 but I appreciated the sentiment of it. And, um, um, but I thought it was a way to maybe w s sewing or using yarn became a way that I could maybe emotionally connect to what she was doing. And in turn, I realized what my grandma was doing, but I always feel like stepping into something allows me to explore it more and more and more. So I end up learning more and more and more and more about the thing. Um, and, and so like just the ability to start sewing opened up different possibilities for me and it opened up different avenues for me to explore, whether it's the legacy of what my grandma and her family and cotton picking and all of that meant for, for them or, or maybe even what um, fashion means or like putting clothes together, whether it's a Kooji sweater or um, a J.W. Anderson sweater, whatever, they, they all sort of, um, or even Chinese um, silks or whatever, it just sort of opened up all these possibilities for me to explore and get into a much larger history that becomes present in me today. Well, I hope that makes course, sense. It's sort of all yes, over the place. It's, it's very tender. And actually one of the things, the characteristics, everything about our discussion is, you know, I love it when people talk about love in discussions because, you know, 
I was very fascinated to hear you talk about guilt too, about being guilty about the sheer pleasure of making work um, and the love of it. And I, when I first uh, talked to Donna, one of the things that really struck me was that you are as much in love with painting now, Donna, it seems to me, mm. as you were probably when you were 19 or 20 years old. And oh, you know- Four, <laughs> four years old. <laughs> four years old, even better. No, but it's remarkable because, you know, to be an artist, in my view, is the most difficult thing anybody can do. Um, and so to be, it's a, it's a love affair to have lasted a lifetime is, is amazing. But for you, Donna, you use, you use materials too, the cheesecloth that informs how the paint is guided over the surface, the staining, I mean, it's a very, very physical activity. You know, you, I see you, you know, images of you throwing these canvases around. And let me tell you, these are not light. You know, they're, <laughs> oh, it keeps even me in if shape. Off, sorry, <laughs> tell me that again. It keeps me in shape. <laughs> it certainly does. Uh, because I, I lifted one, um, of course, I shouldn't be doing that, but I lifted one when during the installation. And, you know, it's like, hmm, I'm glad I go to the gym. <laughs> But tell me, your use of, how did you, how, when did you first start using cheesecloth on your, on your surfaces? Sometimes it remains, sometimes it gets taken away. How, when was that? Um, 19, uh, 1988, when I was wow. teaching out in California and I really wanted thick, thick paintings and I was spending so much money on paint, I tried to figure out how to um, you know, how to make the paintings thick without tons of oil paint. And so I came up with muslin and then that, that uh, slowly migrated to uh, cheesecloth and then painted string. And, uh, you know, I just want to interject about drawing. Mm -hmm. I used to, when I lived in New York, I lived in New York really most of my life until like 1999 when I moved down here to Philadelphia. And, um, uh, I, when I lived in New York, I drew on the street a lot and every kids had come up to me and old people and just everybody came, would come up to me and say, oh, you're drawing? I draw too. Yeah. Everybody draws. Everybody yeah. draws. Mm -hmm. so, but you just, so joyful. Mm -hmm. yeah. But also, um, one of the things that I wanted to say is that you also have a model every, every week. Yes, I do. I like to work from the model, even if I'm not paying attention to them. They understand they're getting paid. <laughs> they, their feelings aren't hurt, even if I'm ignoring them. They're just sitting there in the room. And, uh, or sometimes I glance at them. So it doesn't have to look like an image. It's something about having a model in the room really gives me an extra dimension in the work I'm doing. It's kind of psychological, actually. <laughs> of course. And do either, do, does anybody else draw outside of making the work that is shown in the gallery? I don't anymore. I used to do a lot of life drawing. Um, and I think when I was doing that, drawing always acted as stimulus for painting. And I think I had this idea in my head that there was... Um, like hierarchy that like painting was here and drawing was here um that that was completely um psychological and wasn't useful so I figured it'd be useful if I integrated them together and instead of sidelining the drawing it became integral to to my work and so now it is um and I don't do anything um outside of like just my everyday practice but I think it's amazing what you were saying Donna about how you were drawing outside and people related to it. And I just think there's something about, um, it's just magical. I don't know why it's such a simple thing. It's so immediate and it reminds you of being a child and it's accessible. Um, and I think painting can sometimes be really daunting. It can seem to be like really intellectual and serious. Like there's something you have to get. And the thing about drawing is that you don't, you just experience it and you enjoy it and you absorb it. Um, and so, yeah, I'm really happy that I've transitioned into a space where I feel like that is part of my practice. Um, yeah. 
And also, of course, you use you use pastels and crayons, which are, you know, that not paintbrushes and not oil paint from the tube. Mm. So they are like they're kind of broadly pencil size. Yeah, yeah. They some of them are massive. Um, and I just say it's not bad, but I describe making my paintings as like coloring in. Like that's literally how I see it. It's really, you know, it's really that's embarrassing. How I started. That's how I started. Too. No, but that's so great. Yeah. 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 I had to go and fix something. Like yeah. um, at the I was like, oh, I'll bring my pastels and I'll just like color it in quickly. And then um, <laughs> that's how you describe making your paintings. I was like, well, basically that's what it yeah. is. Yes. Yeah. 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 But also, I mean, Mandy, I think, I think when I look at your work, I mean, you know, there are, there are immense steps. What's so interesting about all of you is that these steps, that, you know, you, you go right into it. And, and I, I think very much about your work as a kind of bruising in a way. It's very mm. visceral to me. All your work is visceral, but it's very visceral. I feel the, you know, you, these things which are half seen, you know, shadows, but also the color of them too, they're the color uh, not always, but um, often for me, a bruising. And what you you haven't seen, I think, is that now the floor in Mandy's um, gallery is really become like a painting. It's the same color. It's been walked on. The um, the latex has has changed so significantly in a way that I couldn't have possibly conceived at the beginning. Mm. So the whole thing is right, right. You know, it's, it's kind of joined together in a fascinating way. Mm. It's the circular logic. So thinking about yes. going back to drawing again, the primacy of drawing. Like I used to do life drawing with, with the dead. And I was thinking like having that lack of distance with flesh and going inside back to what you're, you're doing, Rachel. Like this boundary of the like outside inside and minimizing that difference is painting for me. Um, so that again, that Mobius strippy thing happens and conceptually you, you're in like this in-between space that is the moldability of paint. So doing and having access to these life drawing classes is really integral. And of late, I've just kind of treated, because I always put drawing higher up. So I'm the opposite. Um, so I've, I haven't had access to life drawing in that way for a while. So of late, like with this lockdown, I've been journaling a lot, just really simple journaling. So the drawing- What do you call it? Journaling? Journaling. Just journaling. Jan journaling. What's that? Journaling, like writing. In a oh, diary. Writing. Oh, journals. Yeah. Okay. Journal. Yeah, journal. Yes. So yes, like yes. just Sorry. writing my, just very simply yes. writing my dreams down for my mental health, like seeing like what the sign returning signifiers are. And sometimes I'd try and do like thought drawings. So like feeling drawings that like mm -hmm. kind of look diagrammatic, kind of like anatomy studies, but with like these sig recurring signifiers. So the drawing has taken that form of late, um, mm. which kind of like is the in-between between like text and, and image. It's like the mm. in-between. So that in-between space is always what I'm interested in between. Mm -hmm. You know, these mm. different do I don't know like if for you, Donna, um, if language has a part in helping you to create an image or is it something that's not so much part of how you work? Well, uh, I find language, I'm very interested, for instance, in Mandy's work, because someone said, I don't remember who, that the closer you look at a word, the greater the distance the word looks back at you. Mm -hmm. So to me, there, I'm really interested in this point of incoherence, where you, um, there's so many words that it becomes an abstract field, which is the way the world is now with this deluge of words mm. and we're always all, all on the internet and everything and checking the news so to me it gets into this point where I can't hear anything it, anymore and it's this kind of very abstract place so I'm always especially as I get older I'm always in a pretty abstract place even yeah. even when I'm uh, hearing language or speaking mm. Mm. yeah that's really interesting and I think the thing that really resonates with both of like what you just said is uh the idea of um language being in and of itself like succinct it's like describing something but then the meaning of that is also like very abstract and mm. is linked to something which is 
Yeah. Oh, hi. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> um, we lost you. Yeah, I just think personally, it, it becomes something which uh, is linked to like, what I'm trying to explore in the paintings, which is like an inner landscape, an emotional landscape, and how that creates pictures. And those pictures are actually very hard to define and to give life to outside of my interior but um yeah I just thought it was interesting how you spoke about that Mandy because I think you don't realize how all of these things actually are part of making a painting or part mm. of making a drawing or part of like making an image um and yeah it's nice to hear it being said by other people because I always feel like oh all these things I do are so strange and like disconnected but actually they're not so it's interesting because um, Rachel and I share a mutual friend, uh, Vanessa Jackson, who described being a painter as like being a, a poet in terms of the solitude. You know, you're not, you're not engaging with anybody else, you're on your own. It's a very, in a way, private uh, activity. So it's, it's really interesting to hear you talk about words and, you know, that communication of a kind of narrative. Does that strike a chord with you, Alvaro? I think you might have to unmute yourself. The Thank idea you. of words? Uh. Yes. Well, narrative, really. I mean, you were talking very, very eloquently about the narrative of why you use the materials you use um, and that way of speaking with love to, to your family and to your history. Um, but I wondered if, you know, the, you draw a lot, uh, I don't, from memory, uh, think you draw from the figure, but I mean, from, from a model, but I could be wrong. Do you draw from a model? Uh, sometimes, yeah. whatever the there work needs. Mm -hmm. um, and do you get a model and have it in your studio or do you go somewhere to draw from the model? Uh, it's very uh, situational. It's really what it's all situational. Sometimes it's some. Sometimes the person's right there, and then sometimes it's all made up in my head. Um, but I think I think the point that Rachel that I sort of came in on the end and heard that Rachel was talking about this idea of landscape. I thought was really uh, important. This idea of like creating an internal landscape, which is. I think one of the most interesting things that human beings have done is this idea of, of maps and like what constitute a map and how a map looks and and that sort of situates like uh, um, how it then it ends up situating us in sort of different places based on the sort of map that we've uh, created and uh, or pictured for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And what do you think is the map of now for all of you? I mean, you know, this this kind of... Uh, um, none of us have ever been in the situation that we are now in a global way. Um, and we're all having to react to it in the best way we can. But what, what does it mean to you to be making art at this point in time? Mm. Donna, what, do, what, what, what does it... How do you address this? crazy moment. You're about to go into elections. I, I'm sitting on a rock in the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> and woo, woo. <laughs> yes. Yes. Because all I can do is hold on to my rock and continue my painting. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And has it changed at all as a result of the lockdown or this period of, of being really separate from our, all our normal lives. Yes, it's made it more important to me that I that I paint. It's made it. Um, that's my that's my way of staying here. Mm -hmm. Is that true for all of you? Yeah, I think so. I think um, I got a better understanding of um, my priorities. I also got a better understanding of um, the usefulness of art in some ways but also how it doesn't 
go beyond certain boundaries and parameters. So the need to really be entering spaces where I'm helping or trying to help. So what you're talking about, Julia, with what's happening in the world, like, you know, just working on things like campaigning and I don't know, just teaching, like doing things that I think exist outside the boundaries of like having a self-reflective and, you know, quite private and privileged um, space to operate in um, and trying to work in ways that are in the real world as well. I think that's what the lockdown has emphasized the need of for, for me um, personally. Um, Mandy, um, how is it for you? How's it been for you? <laughs> I mean, it's too raw to really reflect right now, but you know, you've seen the, you've seen the decline <laughs> and, the, and the repair. Um, so for me, it's like, it's both knowing that it's a sacred space and, and valuing that greater than I did before. And also knowing that the limitations like Rachel was saying, and now the agitation is coming more urgently into my body. So it's being forced out through like this performative, more performative because painting is performative in a sense, um, like outlet. And like, I haven't danced properly in like five years. And it's like, it's not even a dance. It's like a soul shake of like agitation. <laughs> Actually remind, reminds me of like my care work when I was working with um, the feelings I'm thinking and how painting stops at that point for me because mm. it is the paintings are about a certain kind of brokenness and a kind of broken syntax of like words material and trying to give a body to like consolidate that's always failing but there's a limit to that when it's happening in your body and you and it doesn't come out in the brush mm. um, so yeah, just thinking what it means to like shake, shake and how that can take form in, in, a, in a different like time-based live way. Um, so yeah, that's, that's where I'm at, I'm at but I, I, don't know, I don't know how to articulate it yet. It's all yet to be articulated. Yes. And I think it's only with perspectives that perhaps you will be able to, and actually the, the viewers, the audience will be able to see possibly suffer maybe really quite large changes in the work that may remain yeah. or they may or it may go back I mean Alvaro you worked during lockdown in your studio I think it was you spent a lot of time working at home um, and some of the projects you were going to work on had to be deferred which of course is always like for so many people um, but did you feel you made a poster that was very much about communicating uh, what you've been doing in the studio, but also something that would be a kind of project for the greater good. Did you, can you talk a little bit about that period? I think one of, I think one of the sort of um, narratives that we have inherited, uh, one of the maybe problematic narratives that we've inherited is um, who gets to turn to making as a way to deal with um, deal with the things that are happening around them, I think uh, painting for me has always been, or drawing or whatever creating, has always been um, an important part of my existence and has grounded me in my sanity. And I think we've sort of um, inherited a culture or a cultural narrative that has only given space for a few people to mm -hmm. live life at thinking of themselves with, with the justification of making something, to deal with mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. And we've, it's almost part of um, a sort of, and it's happened for many reasons, including like a kind of capitalist sort of, uh, industrial um uh but i think painting what 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 covid did make me become even more aware of um was how much that i think every generation has sort of fought for other to open up art um to everybody i mean whether it's boys or whoever um they all sort of fought to make everybody feel welcomed um, 
into the idea that they should be making something to deal with what's happening in the world. And I think we see that in a sort of conservative government that, we, that we're living under, that those things are sort of further and further under attack. And I think um, one of the things that sort of became, I became aware of was sort of maybe uh, that it's my generation's job to uh, um, fight against that narrative as much as possible and try to open up art um, as much as possible that anybody can feel like the world is really crushing our crushing right now. We're dealing with so many different things. And the idea of maybe not putting that stress or that anger on a loved one, but sort of in putting it on a piece of paper, right? If you're right. angry, it's so much easier to just go, yeah, let me just <laughs> but when you have somebody next to you, you're gonna that energy, that negative energy has to go somewhere. And, it, and, and many times it ends up going towards another person. And mm -hmm. I think- Or what, inside. Yeah, yourself. Or inside. inside. Yeah. Which but, of course is as dangerous as projecting it onto another person. It's to be avoided at all costs. Yeah. Um, um, no, it's very, it's, it's very, I mean, you're talking about really important things and I want to ask one last question about how do you feel about group shows as opposed to solo exhibitions? And do you see a synergy between your work, your own work and the other artists in the show? Because painting is such a singular activity as opposed to a group endeavor. And so does the experience of showing coming out of the studio with your, with your, with your own work, with yourself, um, your work that you know and you care about and you love and you nurture and you bring into the world and then suddenly it's out there, my God, I can't think of anything more terrifying and I'm very um, sensitive to that, what it must be like. So, but do you, do you see the connections between your work or do you feel it's a show about painting and that's really, so to speak, in a way, the end of it? Who wants to start? Mandy. Oh, you wait. need to unmute. It's still muted. Oh, yes, there you are. You should be fine. Okay. No, it's no. something else. Never mind. Let, uh, Donna, if I may, can I ask you? Yeah. Oh, I feel so very strongly connected to the other artists. And this is like the best of all possible worlds because everybody has their own space. Mm -hmm. So it's not like one space with one, one, one. That's a very different kind of show. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a great show. And I'm super, super interested mm -hmm. in ev everyone's work. And I would so much love to see it in person. Mm -hmm. I know. I, it, um, it, we're so, so sad that you can't be here. But um, it is fantastic that you've joined us. And also in these conversations, too, we had a walkthrough early on in the, um, really before the show opened, and you were very much present there. And of course, Alvaro is such an enormous fan of yours, as we all are. So you've been very I'm much a fan of Alvaro's, too. <laughs> Well, loving's the really important, you know, this is a, this is a, I'm, I'm the print, I'm loving leader, if I can put it like that. <laughs> uh, and Alvaro, what about you? Well, I think um, this has given me time to uh, have maybe a, an intimate moment oh, with wow. all three of you um, um, in a way that maybe uh, I wouldn't have had if we hadn't been together so um it's really it really uh is exciting because it also me i think all three of you come from such different ideas and um and i always feel like part of community is communication and that means mm. you see people and that you allow their ideas to sort of become part of your dna and then you grow out of it Okay. And uh, so okay. undoubtedly, this is sort of one of those moments that will play out in my, in, in, within me as time goes on. It's very good to hear. 
Um, Mandy, how, how's the sound? I'm, I'm going to try it without, without. Yes, it's good. Yeah, you're back. I can hear you. Yeah. Yes, yes. Hooray. I was trying to say that I found it really reassuring, actually, like how time cycles work. So I could see the connection so explicitly with Alvaro and Donna's work and with myself and, and Rachel. So it's like how time is like is, is circular and form and, and, and invention or that non-invention works and how this, this repetition in time happens. So that to me is like a reassuring, it's, it's not even like you have to talk about the connections, you can just see them. They're very much mm -hmm. there and natural. Right. Um, so right. when I, yeah, that always makes me feel really um, reassured in nature, I guess. When I, when I see form like mirrored in, in multiple uh, spaces. Um, and it's amazing how you had the intuition to like through conversation, curatorial conversation and, and having those painter eyes of yours, maybe, Julia, um, that you, <laughs> it organically grew to what it is. So very, very honored. Well, I, I feel enormously privileged to have worked with you all, really enormously privileged. And particularly during this period, because it feels, you know, people are more honest now that, you know, before in a curatorial conversation, like you say 12 months ago, if we'd been talking about love and guilt and legacy in such a direct way and such an unembellished way, honest way, I mean, it would have been possible, absolutely, but unlikely. And I think one of the things about this period has been a kind of, because we've all been put back into ourselves in a way, it's become, we've become, you know, we've been, we've been unable to mask things in the same way it's been one of the really positive things that have come out of this period. Mm. And Rachel, what about you? Yeah, I would just say that I feel like um, the show was built on a rock, not on sand, as like an analogy. Like it just feels like there's good ground and then all of the work just comes from that. There's like a, mm. a frequency level, I think. Like, I don't know, like energetically, I just think, um, there's a consistency in our relationship to our work, which I think is evident, our interests, um, our desires, um, vulnerabilities. And I think that's what, for me, makes the show um, really interesting and like made me really happy to be part of it because I felt like people, the other like artists in the show, um, were doing things that I, learned from but I felt like I didn't understand what I was doing myself so it was just like I felt like I was it was like very affirmative like for me um so yeah that's the best way that's that was very bumbly but I hope that made sense no no it wasn't bumbly <laughs> at all it was extremely eloquent well thank you all so very much indeed it's been a great honor to be having this conversation with you so thank you Mandy Donna Rachel and Alvaro for participating and for including your work in this exhibition. Thank and you. I hope there will be many you. more occasions when we'll be able to work together. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.